everybody and welcome to episode 2 of the Keystone 5. Today our special guest is Jared Baker who is a former member of our Brookside Boys and Girls Club. He is currently an assistant principal at Tipton County Schools. He enjoys spending time with his family and cloud computing. So let's move on to the interview so we can learn more about Jared and his Boys and Girls Club experience. During these times through the coronavirus, how have you kept productive through COVID-19? That is a really good question. Because I work at a school, you know, we, we can't be in school at this time uh, due to the virus. But as a, an employee, of course, I have to go up a few days and we have to practice uh, social distancing. Spending time with my boys. I have three boys and spending time with them, catching up with them. My hobbies are sports. I love sports. Unfortunately, we've been having to have to watch a lot of reruns and yeah. uh, old games <laughs> and things like that, but it's all good. And also I have a new hobby, cloud computing. So for people who put things in the cloud, you know, so that's just like the new thing and just learning about that. So put my kids, playing with them, keeping up with them, cloud computing, going to work here and there when we can. That's pretty much all and some repairs around the house, uh, stuff I keep trying to put off. <laughs> can't do it anymore because I'm at home and I got to do it. So uh, that's all I've been doing. Yeah, I think everyone's biggest challenge through um, quarantine was, well, one, the first week was exciting. No work, no school. You don't have to do anything. But after that, I had to get into yard work and oh yeah, kind of realize, well, this is a good time to spend time with family and kind of get some things done, like you said, that you've been putting off forever. So it's been... I think a much needed break for everyone. What was your favorite experience at the Boys and Girls Club? Have you ever met Todd Love before? Yes, he is our area director. Okay. Uh, best moment was when I dunked on him. <laughs> dunked on him pretty bad. Um, that was one of them. Dunked on him, laughed at him while he was on the ground. <laughs> yeah, that's that's number one or two. I can't point anything out. I can just tell you that that time frame was was my best this time and I often reflect back and just the memories of just being able to help the club students learn to play things I always felt like as a child they needed to feel good about something like they needed to be good at something so I will always work with students and kids with something that they can do well and make sure that they know that there's something they can do well and and build their um, confidence up so I think it's really important you know, for a child to have that uh, confidence booster and something. So that's what I look for when, when I work with the members of the club. I always really look for something that a child can do well and for them to know that and to bring that out. And so they'd be like aware of it. It just help your self-esteem. I've had people to do that to me as well. So that's something that I remember doing and really focus on. And and um, that's that's one thing I do remember about that. I think um, working at the club now, what I never understood going through each of the year was when they would say, you don't have to talk about the building because no one cares about the building. They care about what's in it. And so hearing your response, um, as you think about all your time at the club, you think about how it was really the people in the building yeah. and the other members that help you build your memories and help you gain all sorts of life skills and help you understand this is something that um, really shapes who you are today. Speaking of graduation, I know a lot of seniors are going through a lot of changes and some of them may not even have a graduation. They may just get a email saying, congratulations. Yeah. Um, and I know you just said you had a mini event for your seniors. So what would be one piece of advice that you would give your seniors that are moving on to the next big thing? Well, Tennessee up here is a little bit different from different states and what I'm about to say, but the main advice I give them, because we have something here called Tennessee Promise, where almost every student, and, and it could be every student, is guaranteed at least two years of college for free. Not to take advantage of that would be a shame. It would be a waste. So um, the advice I always give seniors and graduating people is, listen, I uh, understand that you worked hard last 12 years plus. You want to kind of relax. Hey, I graduated. I want a year off. Uh, me personally, I, I would tell people, do not take a year off. Do not. Because a year becomes two years. Two years become four. Four become 
you know, I have a responsibilities, house and wife and kids, and I can't go back to school. So it's not the end, rather it's the beginning. So here I, I try to tell them, take advantage because your next two years, I think in my opinion, what you do your next two years out of school will pretty much dictate how things will go. That's in my mind, because if you're staying with it, you're not taking off time just for you, just to sit around and do nothing or, or to work, which is not wrong with working, but just stay real and productive those next two years out of high school, whether it's a trade school, which is awesome, technical school, which is awesome, four year, if that's you, that's awesome. Or if you have to go into the work field, that's fine. But the next two years, stay busy, diligent, continue to work, better yourself, and don't take time off just because you think you need a break. Use the summer months for that. Take June, July, some of August off, and then let's get back after it because your life is, is just beginning. And people think, oh, I made it, I'm done. It's the beginning. So that little bit of advice is not really great advice. It's, it's, it's not mind-blowing, but it's something that I want to remind them. This is the beginning. And please take advantage of, you know, any schooling in any way shape or form doesn't have to be going to a four-year doesn't have to always be a two-year technical college trades and things like that are very valuable yes i agree with that um my dad always said that even if i don't go to college i'm going to trade school i'm going somewhere mm -hmm. i'm going to work so um, like you said i think it's important that we take advantage of every opportunity that is given to us well i know um growing up at the brookside club there are so many great people like our area director todd love that have walked through that club so who is your biggest role model from your boys and girls club days and why it's easy it's it's todd love um i've known todd since i was 15 and um he's been great almost like a father figure I mean, he's old though now but i mean i mean more like an uncle at first and then he started going there's a gray hair and getting old on me and so but no todd just because of his character todd really genuinely cares about the well-being of kids and that they they have what they need the basics and all the moral responsibility i mean all the basic stuff that goes into you know having a good childhood he wants you to have fun control fun but just the way that he went about his day i mean he was organized he planned things out he spent time with you he cared about your well-being he cared about the club he cared about organization and and he didn't just care about it i mean he did it i mean everything that he said and he held us to he did so he wouldn't ask you to do anything that he wouldn't do so there's a lot of reasons why i can say that todd was my most influential person but those some of the main things he was just consistent uh you can talk to him about anything he give you really good advice todd was the first person to tell me to that i should look into teaching as a career. He was the first one to really notice that in me. And I think it's great when you have people to speak something positive or they see something in you and um, they let you know about it. And then what you do with it, that's on you. But at least when you see something great or greater and good in somebody, let them know it. Let them know it. So uh, for a lot of reasons, Ty Love. And I can see why Ty is your favorite. When I talk about him, I say he is like a father figure. And one thing I think is funny that I like about Todd is if you do something wrong, he won't tell you that was a stupid idea, but he will say, I wouldn't go about it that way. I would try yeah. <laughs> to do this in this part the next time. Do you have any uh, Todd impressions? Can you impress him? Well, back in the 1600s, you know, when we used to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, the only one, I, I'm a very shy person, quiet, and the best one I got is I can hear, well, Jay, next time you're not loud enough, I'm going to yell at you and say, I can't hear you. That's the best one I got. Todd always, that's, that's he's always yelling at me to be louder. We yeah. Went to the yeah. Keystone Conference this past summer. It's a leadership development conference for the Keystone Club. And we were standing in this room with maybe 200, 300 people. And <laughs> Todd looked at me and I said something to him. And he yelled, Speak up, Jay. Yeah, I sound about I right. Your, I heard your impersonation there, smart guy. <laughs> hey, the 1600s, we used to build our own campfire. Well, that concludes the end of our interview. We want to thank LeJarrett Baker for being able to come on and share his expertise of his Boys and Girls Club experience. We really appreciate you for joining us. Thank you again. Hello, and thank you for watching the Keystone 5. 
If you liked it, which I'm pretty sure you did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe below. Thank you, and we'll see you next week.